everyone so today we have learnt a new exercise 3.1 so in the previous class we have discussed the elements of geometry both the introduction of what is the geometry and uh, axioms etc and etc so now coming to the point today we have discussed the uh, exercise 3.1 problems already these total things we have discussed in the introduction part right so once more and through the video previous videos you will get the total information now coming to the first question here answer the following so here we have five questions in the first question how many dimensions a solid has so how many dimension a solid has solid means like this so this type of uh, items are called as solids that are either in cube, cube shape cuboid shape and uh, pyramid uh, cone like that okay so how many dimensions we have a solid a solid has three dimensions namely length breadth and height sometimes we can call it as this height is also depth for example it is a solid how many dimensions we have length breadth breadth and height for example we have to observe another solid here also we have three dimensions length breadth and height sometimes we can uh, length breadth and depth also so that's why any solid have three dimensions length breadth and height or depth now coming to the second question how many books are there in euclid's element already we have discussed this point and that it is important how many books are there in euclid's elements there are 13 volumes are there it is most important how many books total it has 13 volumes write the number of faces of your cube and cube how many faces are there for cube and cube for example we if we have to take it is a cube how many faces we have one back side two three four five six total a cube has six faces at the same time how many faces are having cube one two three four five Six total cuboid also having six faces. Now fourth question: What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? This is a triangle A B C, and the interior angles are three interior angles: angle one, angle two, angle three. So the sum of these three interior angles is always one hundred and eighty degrees. So, sum of the interior angles of your triangle is 180 degrees. And this is the exterior angle. It is also exterior. Exterior means outside of the triangle. It is also exterior triangle. So, sum of the exterior angles of your triangle is 360 degrees. Sum of the interior angles of your triangle is 180 degrees. That is the difference between interior and exterior angles of your triangle. Next one, write 3 Undefined geometry. This is also we have discussed in the previous videos. How many? Just write any three of undefined terms. They are point. Point. We can't define the definition of this point. And line. Line also undefined. Next plane. Plane means this is the plane. This is the plane. So these are the three undefined terms of a geometry. Now going to the second question. Second question, state whether the following statements are true or false. Also give reasons for your answer. So the first question, only one line can pass through a given point. Only one line can pass through a given point. For example, it is a point. According, uh, based on this question, they are, they are saying, just by using this point, we can draw only one line. So is it true? No. In the previous class, we have discussed a point we can draw through this point we can draw many lines right so like this we can draw many lines passing through this given one point but in the question they are saying only one line can pass through the given point so it is wrong so false now second question, all right angles are equal. Is it true or false? All right angles. 
This is right angle. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So all right angles are having 90 degrees. So all, are, all of these are equal. So it is true. Next. Circles with same radius. So with the same radius we can draw many of the circles. For example I have to take the center and with the radius 2 cm. Again I have to take more one with the 2 cm of radius. And I have to take more one circle with the radius 2 cm. So all circles are with the radius same. Then the total circles are equal. For example, my bangles are the example for this best one. So with these two are the circle shape with the radius also same. And these two are equal. So that's why circles with the same radius are equal. So it is true. Next one. A finite line can be extended on its both sides endlessly to get a straight line. For example, we have to take AB. AB is a one finite line with the something, some measurement, anything. If we have to extend endless on both sides, it is also continued. So we are getting a straight line. So it is also true. Now the last one, from this figure, AB is greater than, is it true? AB is greater than AC. So AB means this total whole and AC is some small part of this AB. So uh, in the previous class we learned always you, from the Euclid's we says uh, whole is whole is always greater than the smaller. So whole is AB, small is AC. So AB is greater than AC. So it is also obviously true. So okay is it clear to you? Now going to the third question. Now third question, in the figure, from this figure, given below show that the length AH, the length of this total AH is greater than AB plus BC plus CD. So now we have to prove that AH is always greater than AB plus BC plus CD. For that, I have observed here total how many points are given in this straight line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Their names are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. A, B, B, C, C, D, A, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, H. Or we can make so many straight lines by using this straight line. So whatever, let it be. A, H is greater than A, B plus B, C plus C. First of all, given line. What is our given line? That is A, H. This is total line. A, H. We prove that. We prove that. AH is greater than AB plus BC plus CD. From this figure, just we have to observe this right, right hand side part. AB plus BC plus CD can be written as like this. Observe here. AB plus BC plus CD. We are getting the total all is AD. So, AD. AB plus BC plus CD is equal to AD. Now, AD is this. AD is the part of this total age, right? This is the small part of this total age. So, AD is the part of age. From the Euclid's axiom, we already learned all is always, all is always greater than the small. So, this is all part is greater than, small part is smaller than. So, all is greater than the small. So, the small part is uh, AD. And greater part is AH. So AH is greater than AD. And we know that what is AD? AD always, always already we can written as AB plus BC plus CD. So our assumption is completed. AH is greater than AB plus BC plus CD. Now fourth question. If a point Q lies between two points. Q lies between two points P and R. For example I have to draw a straight line. Take two points, one is P and another one is R. And this Q lies between two points P and R such PQ is equal to QR. Means we have to take that point Q, divide this PR into two equal parts. Like we have to take the Q is in between or middle of that PR like this. So PQ is equal to QR. 
So from this we have to write let PR be a given line and given that PQ is equal to QR that is Q is the point on PR. Now PQ is equal to QR. How the length of this PQ is equal to always the length of QR according to the question. So PQ plus QR we are getting PQ this part and QR this part we are getting or P R right now already PQ plus QR QR can be also written as always PQ and K both are equal now so that's why in the place of QR we substitute PQ so right answer is PR PQ plus PQ adding these two we are getting double PQ means 2PQ is equal to PR. Just we need to find only the value of PQ. No need to take 2 here. So transfer this is from another side. Here it is multiplied. From this side it becomes like this. PR by 2. Also it can be written as PQ is equal to half into PR. So PQ is equal to half into PR. Okay. This is also important for examination point of view. Now going to the next question. Now the fifth question, draw an equilateral triangle whose side is of 5.2 cm each. So, do you know in the last year class, you learnt about how to draw the triangles by using of the given side. So, it is the, you only do it. Now, sixth question also, in the previous class, we have discussed what is conjecture, conjecture and the example, golden. Uh, already we discussed that is, so you have to write. And uh, the seventh question is, Mark two points P and Q. Mark two points P and Q. So we have to mark any two points. One is P and another one is Q. Draw a line passing through this P, P and Q. Okay. Now. How many lines are parallel to PQ? Can you draw? So how many lines are parallel to PQ. So I have to draw like this. 1, 2, 3, upside at the same time downside also. So like how many lines are parallel to pass through uh, this PQ? By using of this parallel to this PQ, we have to draw many lines parallel to PQ. So that's why infinitely many lines parallel to PQ can be drawn. Like this we have to draw many parallel lines. Now eighth question is also homework to you. Uh, you can only do it. Already we have discussed this uh, one. Uh, in the From this uh, uh, diagram L and M are the lines and N is the transversal line. Here the angles are 192. 192. The, su the, interior, the sum of this interior angles of 192 less than 180 degrees. So this is only you have to do in the previous call go and search you will get that answer okay that from the textbook also you have to get the solution now ninth question in the adjacent figure in this figure given below if angle 1 is equal to angle 3 angle 2 is equal to angle 4 and angle 3 is equal to angle 4 write the relation between angle 1 and angle 2 and uh, using the Euclid's postulate so what is the given assumptions? Uh, angle 1 is equal to angle 3. Angle 1 is equal to angle 3. And angle 3 is equal to angle 4. And angle 2 is equal to angle 4. So once you have to check from this question. Angle 1 is equal to these two are equal. Okay. And angle 3 is equal to angle 4. These two also equal. Automatically these two. Angle 1 and angle 4 also equal. Th these two are equal. These two are equal. So automatically these two equal. And angle 2 is equal to angle 4. These two also equal. So automatically angle 1 and angle 2 also equal. So angle 1 is equal to angle 2 are equal. Both 1 and 2 are equal to angle 4. This is the relation between um, angle 1 and angle 2 and more one problem the last one is the 10th question now we can solve that last question from this figure given below we have bx is equal to bx bx is equal to half into ab so this bx is in the half of the total ab and by is equal to total by is equal to half of the bc bc half of the bc and AB is equal to AC. The measurements of the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. Now we have to show that BX and BY both are equal. So from for 
to prove this one we have to take the given measurements dx is equal to half into ab by is equal to half into bc ab is equal to bc now we prove that dx is equal to b1 so given the ab is equal to bc so this ab part and bc part both are equal by euclid's axiom it says half of this total also equal one to other half of the means half of ab and half of bc the total ab and bc both are equal at the same time half of ab and half of bc also equal from according to euclid's axiom half of the total is always equal one to other already we know very well half of ab is equals in the question they mentioned bx and half of bc is also by so what is uh, proving bx is equals to by here we are getting bx is equals to by okay so now this problem we have to complete this total chapter okay